everyone, welcome into the Flippin' Hippo's YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us this evening. This is Star, the Flippin' Hippo. We are into March now, and it sure did come in like a lion here in Pennsylvania. It's been freezing cold, and we've had a lot of snow. I don't know about you guys, but I, for one, cannot wait for spring. Today is March 4th, and it is a Monday, which means it's one of my favorite days of the week. It's time for What Sold on eBay! Just like every week, you guys, I'm going to give you a glimpse of our Instagram updates throughout the week and show you the packages that we shipped out. I do up date our Instagram every day with a photograph of our packages that we shipped just to kind of give a feel for what we're doing as far as volume and if we're hitting our sell-through rate uh, goals every day. This week was definitely full of ups and downs as you will see when I flip through these. When we're done with that we will move over to the highlights of the week. I always like to show you guys some items that I feel are bolos for you guys while you're outsourcing. Sometimes I show you my mistakes. Fortunately I don't have any mistakes this week to share. And then I also show you the really exciting flips for Keith and I. Things that went for a lot of money or went really fast or for whatever reason were just really exciting. So let's just jump right on in. This is what we shipped out today. So this photo encompasses the packages from Friday at 2 p.m. through today at 2 p.m. We do same day shipping with a cutoff at 2 p.m. every day. This is not good for us. Uh, 19 total sales, 16 on eBay, three on Poshmark is uh, not even the 0.5% sell through rate that number one, we historically reach. And number two is our goal. We like to hit that or higher um, because we have historically always been able to reach 0.5% except when sales are really slow. Um, but still, it's nothing to be ashamed about, I guess. There's 19 sales there. Some of those were higher dollar items. Three of those were on Poshmark where you know we all make more money. Um, last weekend was worse. So you know, puts things into perspective. You could see here, I said that sales were poop last weekend because they were poop. We sent out 16 total last weekend. And again, three of those were Poshmark. But then we rebounded. Check this out. Tuesday is usually our slowest day when we'll only send out a couple packages. Um, we had seven, and one of them was a hat that I'm going to show you guys. Wednesday was stellar. We had 11 packages and one of those was Poshmark. Um, you can see right here where I said it was a nice bounce back from a poopy weekend. And then um, Thursday we had two. And then on Friday we had six. So a clear imagery here of how up and down online sales can be. You can go from hero to zero and back to hero again in one week. You just got to keep trucking along, keep listing, get those multiple streams of income coming in. So when one of them is slower or not producing as much profit for you, the other streams can kind of pick up the slack. But just don't give up right here. I said it right here. Uh, sometimes sales are slow, but if you put in the hard work and effort, they will always bounce back. Everything will balance out, guys. You just got to have faith. You can't give up. You just got to keep going. Don't get frustrated over one bad day. Don't give up. If anything, you should be working harder. But on the other hand, if you have a really good day or a really good weekend with a lot of sales and you make a ton of profit, don't let that make your head too big either. Don't let that be the reason you kind of slack off and oh, I had a good day. Keep going. You should be working as hard every single day, no matter what whether your sales are slow or not. Let's go look at the highlights, you guys. I'll get off my soapbox. So uh, we will start with the plush like we always do. Plush are my favorite. So this is Woody Woodpecker. He is an NASCAR plush. He's got a checkered flag. He's got his hang tags, his tush tag. He's in good condition. I found him at a local pop-up flea market last summer. He was like a, a dollar maybe. Because he was vintage, because he was Woody Woodpecker, because it said limited edition, because of it being NASCAR and him still having his hang tag, I thought, why not for a dollar? I got him home and comped him and he wasn't worth as much as I would have liked him to be. Um, 
he was more worth around 12. You can see he went for a little under 12 because he was on our weekend sale, 25% off. Um, he did have to go in a little tiny box because of the flag you can see in this photo. I was worried the flag would get ruined. That stick bends. And then also that he had his hang tag. So he went in a little box, but he was like 10 ounces to ship. Um, but yeah, I took a risk on him for a dollar. He wasn't worth as much as I had hoped, but I'm so happy with what I got for him. These guys, Five Nights at Freddy. If you watched last week's What Sold on eBay, I sold another Five Nights at Freddy's plush. And then these two I sold together as a lot. All three of them came from our Goodwill, the one that's closest to our house, that keeps the basket up front with the 50 cent plush in it. So these two were a dollar for both. And they sold for $19 was what I accepted. Um, you can see the one had, I just showed you, there you go. He had writing on his teeth, like some pen marks. Um, they would have been worth a little bit more, but I knocked some dollars off for that. I probably would have asked more like 23 to 25 if they were in pristine condition and had hang tags. Um, but I was okay to accept 19 and the two of them just went in together and a big old piece of eBay branded tissue paper. I rolled them up in that and uh, threw in one of our thank you cards and they went in a poly mailer. Look at this. I just showed him off in a haul. He went pretty fast as well. Those Five Nights at Freddy's and this Slimer plush all sold within a couple of weeks of being listed, which is super fast for plush. It's almost unheard of. So you guys, I wanted to share that with you because if you find these obscure characters or these really, really popular right now characters, these are the ones that move fast and for a lot of money. Slimer sold for 16. He was rolled in tissue paper and went in a poly bag. This shirt is a brand that is not anything spectacular. I believe I actually showed it in a haul video and said the same thing, but it was 99 cents and it was a nice button sh front shirt, a Hawaiian button front shirt with this nice embroidery here on the front. Um, it's Bamboo K, which is the brand. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but again, for 99 cents, because of the way it looked, Keith went ahead and picked it up because sometimes it is about the way an item looks, its graphics or whatever. And it sold like in three, three days, three to four days from Keith listing it. And it went for 17. So a dollar into 17 in, in a couple of days is not too shabby. So just keep that in mind when you're outsourcing. Um, sometimes it's not about the brand. And if you're finding things at a cost of goods for like a dollar or a couple bucks that look nice, they're worth bringing home. Here's one of my cardigan sweaters. It's been around since the fall and it just sold finally. Um, I'm kind of laughing at that because if you did watch my live show last night, we had a whole conversation about how women's cardigan sweaters will sell better in the summertime than they do in the fall and winter because women need them for work where people keep their air conditioners on polar arctic. This one was a wool blend. It's a nice sweater. It's op it's almost an open front. It had those um, hook and eye fasteners. It's a nice looking sweater, but it's been around since like the end of last summer when I started to source um, for fall going into winter. Um, it did go for the $20.99 though, so it was worth uh, keeping it around till it moved. These are some booty shorts. Booty, booty, booty. I love flipping booty shorts. You will also know that if you tuned in last night to the live show where I talked about these. These ones have actually been around since last summer. I don't know what took them so long to move or why they sat for so long. Um, this brand, Vocom, it's not a very expensive brand, but it's one that Keith does really well with as far as men's button front shirts and t-shirts and stuff from this brand. They move really quickly. These sat for a long time, but they finally went for $30.10. They cost us 99 cents. Uh, this sweater was also 99 cents. I realized I just forgot to tell you that. This hat was free. It was part of the donation that my friend gave to me when she went out of business. We still have a lot of her inventory downstairs in our foyer that we're working through every week to get through. Um, we got quite a bit of it listed. Quite a bit of it is already sold. This hat, I had I had no idea what it was. I actually had to do a little bit of research on it. Um, I found out it was a bucket hat, and I knew that that's a houndstooth print. 
Um, but I comped it and I was pretty confident that I could get right around $33 for it and it sold for $33. I did ship it um, first class, so it was free shipping to our buyer. It went in a box, not too big of a box, it didn't weigh a lot, it went for first class. And what I did was inside the hat, I flipped it upside down and stuffed the bucket area with um, a bunch of eBay tissue paper just so it would keep its nice shape in transit. You guys probably hear me all the time talk about these why am I want a better butt jeans. Why am I jeans in general I do not source, not even if they're 99 cents. I did in the beginning um, when I was learning, I did pick up some of these. And the exception would be if they're cute. I did pick up a pair of YMI um, last November when Dave and Bill were here. And I showed them in a haul video. But those were like super low cut, really big bell bottom lace up rawhide string in the front. So, you know, just like with every brand, there's always exceptions. If they're super cute or really nice um, item that's really in style or popular, I will pick those up. But in general, YMI is a brand I avoid with the exception of um, like those 70s bell bottom jeans and the Wanna Betta butt. Now, the reason I pick up the Wanna Betta butts for 99 cents when I find them, you can see it only sold for $19, but they flip so fast, it is ridiculous. Every time I get one about a butt jeans in my store, and it doesn't matter the size. They can be really small like this. They can be juniors. They sell within a week. These ones went overnight. I don't find them often. I have found about five pairs of one about a butt ever out in the wild while sourcing. But of all five pairs I sourced, they sold within a week of being listed. They are super fast. So even though they're not worth a lot of money, turning your 99 cents, the profit on this is right around after shipping 10 bucks, give or take a little bit. So to turn your $1 into $11 in less than a week, that to me is a no brainer. So when I do find these, I will absolutely always pick them up. Probably would not pay more than 99 cents for them though, because even paying 99 cents, I'm only profiting 10, 11, give or take. This is another brand that I normally would not pick up, but these ones just looked nice. Again, sometimes it's about the style and the way things look. These have those embroidered bling bling embellished pockets in the back. In the front had some distress and some ripping, which does make jeans more valuable. It doesn't make sense, I know. If they're ripped and torn, they're worth more money. And they're sandblasted, which looks nice. This white part here that you guys can see in with the darker um, wash, that's called sandblasting, and their flare. So just the way that these looked, to me, I thought they were really cute, they were really stylish, and they were 99 cents. I started them at $26, fully intending for them to sit for a while and be very long tail and maybe take a $20 best offer. They sold in less than two weeks at $26. So I guarantee you any brand I ever find again for 99 cents that have this look to them, I will be sourcing. These Aeropostale women jeans, again, it's the brand I typically would avoid. Um, but these were 99 cents and they were a larger size. They were 14 and they were flare leg. So I did get them for the 99 cents. They took a couple months to sell. Um, I think they started their life at like $21 in the store um, and they went for 19. Here's some Joe's jeans. This week is pretty jean heavy guys. Um, I sold a lot of jeans this week, number one. And number two, I had a lot of examples that I wanted to show you as far as jeans. The Wanna Betta Butts are definitely bolos and I wanted to show you um, these because they were so cute and they went for a really high amount. If you actually comp the Vigos jeans in eBay and you look at the more plain ones, they do not go for anywhere near this price. And then also you can get um, some of these brands that are kind of meh. If they're size 14 or more um, and they're 99 cents, why not? And then the Joe's jeans are no brainer. I will source Joe's jeans. I don't care about the price or the look. 
if it's Joe's jeans, if it's that brand, they are coming home with me. I would pay up to two fifty, three bucks for these. Absolutely. These ones were ninety nine cents. All the more better because more profit. And they did sell for thirty four dollars. I accepted a best offer of thirty four dollars. These Miss Me jeans, guys, I don't know what it was about them, but they sold really fast. Um, sometimes it's just the right person at the right time sees your item. There's Miss Me jeans in our eBay in our eBay store and our posh closet that have been sitting for a very long time. Um, these ones sold overnight. They were like literally were listed really late, like at midnight, and they we had a best offer of fifty dollars on them by morning that we accepted. So these did go for fifty dollars overnight. All right, let's look at something a little bit different. This lunchbox was also free to us. It came from my friend um, that donated the hat and all of the other inventory to us. It's just a Dale Earnhardt lunchbox. It needed a little bit of cleaning. Um, I was a little bit of a lazy person about that. What I did was I just opened it up, squirted in some dish soap, ran some hot water in there and let it soak overnight. And then I rinsed it out real good and let it dry. I did get the $15 for it and it folds down real nice so it's really not much different than a purse. It got a quick wrap of bubble wrap and tissue paper and went in a poly. And the last thing I'm going to show you guys this week is my adorable Walt Disney Mickey Mouse with the balloon. We got him at a yard sale in the summer. In fact, I believe it was the day before we left for eBay Open. So we got this last July. And he's actually only been listed in the store for a couple of weeks. Um, he got misplaced. Um, when I found that bag, if you guys remember, the little poo characters, we had the one buyer that bought all six. When we were going through our inventory upstairs and our don't want us, we sometimes find stuff that really aren't I don't want us. They just kind of got put up there with the I don't want us in the death piles. And they get lost, and that's why we're trying to go through all of our old stuff. Because we find some gems, like those poo characters, if any of you saw that What Sold video. There were six of them, and she paid like $80 for all of them. Um, and then this gem was in a bag next to them, and finally listed in our store. And it's only been like two weeks since I um, got him up and listed. Um, I didn't really know what to do as far as comping because when I looked them up, people were selling it for all over the place. Um, I felt like I wanted 40, so I started at 45 just to make sure I had room for best offer. I got a couple of $20 offers, a couple of $30 offers in the first two days this was listed. Um, like within an hour or two of it going up, I immediately got a $20 offer and then overnight a couple more came in. And then some people were offering 30. I went back at 40 with all of those folks who just went away and I never heard from them again. And then finally we got an offer of 35 and I went back with 40 and they took it. They also paid the shipping on it. So um, that may be what was turning some people off. But this has sold for 50 and $60. So um, I was pretty confident in my price and I was willing to sit on them for a while. I mean, heck, we sat on them long enough without him even being in the store because he got lost in our inventory. Um, and I, I felt like he was least, at least worth 40 minimum. Um, and he, the shipping on it uh, did calculate it because he weighed more than a pound. So that was a neat flip for us that was really exciting um a lot of the really good stuff that we are digging out from underneath the death piles and the i don't want us are really good treasures really good things that we found at yard sales and estate sales and flea markets last summer and it just got misplaced or you know put away and forgot about and they're all selling for a lot of money so um, if anything, it's encouraging us to get up there and go through some more stuff and make sure that all the really good items are being listed. And uh, I would encourage you guys to do that too. We are getting, getting towards spring. So maybe we all do a little bit of spring cleaning and just go through all of our inventory that isn't listed and make sure that we don't have any of these little gems sitting there because that's a lot of money that's a lot of profit and you invested in them to begin with you want that money back as well as your profit this guy cost us five dollars so basically five dollars sat around all that time 
instead of selling and making us money. So yeah, just something I wanted to mention. Everybody keep that in mind. Um, spring is around the corner. Let's all do some spring cleaning and find those profitable items. Get them listed because if they're not listed, they are not making you guys any money. Do me a favor before you leave and smash that like button, you guys. It always helps the channel. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Flippin' Hippos. Until next time, you guys have a good night.